Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike, but that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Savvy episode, and this is my little mini-series on finding, for me, the perfect clock radio. If you've seen a few of my other recent videos, you know that my very much loved Boston Acoustic Wave Receptor Radio is really starting to bite the dust, and that had the best FM reception of any radio or any clock radio that I've ever used used. Um, and it's 12 years old, so FM is not so good anymore. And so I'm searching for a little bit better radio that has good FM reception. So I've reviewed a couple already, and that's kind of fun for me because I am a radio collector. And today we're going to review the Model 3 by Tivoli with Bluetooth. Now let's get kind of let's look at the big elephant in the room. So how much does this radio cost retail? I can't even say it. All right, no clock radio is worth that amount of money. Now I actually got this from their outlet store for 50 bucks off. And normally if you buy a clock radio for from an outlet store, it might have a little scratch on it or maybe it's a return from someone or an open box or something. They have the nerve to sell this. Can you see that at all? It has a huge dent in the speaker. Now the radio works okay, but what kind of a classy company is that that would sell a radio with a huge dent? I mean, they should fix that. But let's talk about the radio, and we're going to talk about it not based on price, but just based on how good of a radio it is. So it's a very unique design, something that you're just not going to see anymore. And I love its simplicity. So it has an analog clock, so you know, no AM and PM, just 12, 12 hours over and over again. And what's really kind of unique is the clock completely runs off of an AA battery, a AA battery, and it should last for over a year. So if you change the battery every year, you're going to be in good shape and you're never going to be subject to a power failure. And even if you start the radio, if you want the radio to go off as your alarm, if the power goes off, the little beeper will go off instead of the radio. So you really have a great backup. There's also a very little LED, kind of a bluish whitish LED that perfectly illuminates the style. And it's not too bright, it's not too soft, it's just right. Um, and so you can see the clock easily at night. And of course it's easy to set because you just turn, turn this dial and you're all set. Now, you have to read the instructions, not because it's difficult, but because it's slightly different than your typical clock radio. So you typically would turn it on to your station, like FM or AM a station, and then once it's playing and your volume is adjusted, then you would press the alarm button in and that would set the alarm. It also has your typical sleep function, very simple, no adjustments, just 60 minutes, and it has a snooze button up here. Snooze button feels very nice for some reason. I like the way the snooze bar button feels, um, but it's only five minutes. I wish they would have given us like nine minutes or 10 minutes like most clock radios, but they didn't. Tuning dial is very smooth and very straightforward and pretty accurate. And because it uses the typical Tivoli 3-inch driver up here, the sound is quite pleasant. Now Tivoli will tell you it's high fidelity, not to my ears. I'd say it's a very pleasant sounding radio that has a little bit of a heavy bottom end. That sounds nice. So um, nothing against the, the sound of the radio. I think it's just fine. But don't expect some, you know, gigantic super duper stereo out of it. What you can do is you can accessorize this radio with a lot of different things. So you can actually get a second box that looks like this that has a clock and a speaker on it. So if your partner wants to use a clock radio like a secondary alarm, they can do it on their side of the bed and you can have this on your side. You could also put a subwoofer in here. Um, all those accessories are quite expensive and I personally would not recommend doing that unless you had some special need. Um, you also have an auxiliary in, so you can use a patch cord and plug in a device like your phone or a computer for um, additional sounds and even a mix in, so it will mix in some of your computer sounds if you have it as a computer speaker plus your radio sounds if for some reason you wanted to do that. So you have a lot of different options. When you have the secondary speaker, it becomes a stereo radio. Um, which is okay. It, it uh, also has, which I really like, an, a, a kind of a regular bona fide antenna jack. So you can choose just an internal antenna in here or the little supplied wire, or if you are really out in the country, you can use an external 
antenna, or even something as simple as a pair of cheap rabbit ears, which will probably get you better reception. And so that's all here and available and just, I think, quite thoughtfully designed. So let's talk about, we've talked about the sound, we've talked about the clock. Um, and by the way, I'm not going to give you a sound example for the simple reason that it's meaningless because it's going to come out of this speaker, it's going to go into my microphone, it's going to go into the computer and get encoded, it's going to go to YouTube, and it's not really accurate. You just have to take my word for it that the sound is quite pleasant. So what about the AM and FM performance? Well, if we rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, FM performance. And let's say for clock radios, we said that my Boston, old Boston acoustic radio was a 10. Best one I have ever used for clock radio. And let's say uh, a number one would be like one of those really cheap clock radios that you sometimes get in motels and hotels like a Majestic or some unknown brand that can barely pick up anything. That's a one. Um, I would say that this radio on its FM performance rates around an eight which is pretty darn good. When you get way in the fringes of the dial, like around 88, I think the sensitivity falls off a little bit on this particular radio. But for the majority of the stations, um, even the one that I listen to, which is 91.5, so it is down there, a very good sensitivity, and I really had no problems picking up my fringe FM station that I like listening to, that I like waking up to. So uh, FM performance is quite good. How does that compare it to the Albergo, which is their newer radio? I'd say very similar. How does it compare to the Sanjian that I um, also just recently looked at? I would say the Sanjian is like maybe a 7.5 or a 7.8, pretty close, just a, a hair not as good on the FM performance. What about the AM performance? Well, the one thing that I didn't like about the Albergo is that it had a very narrow swatch of frequency when you tune to a particular frequency, which made the music to in my to my ears sound pretty flat. Sanjian had a more normal swatch, a little bit wider, um, so I thought that sounded quite fine. This radio has a giant swatch of frequency. So what that does is if you're looking listening to a local station, for AM, which of course never sounds as good as FM, it really sounds quite good indeed. What's the trade-off? Don't expect to listen to any weak stations in between the strong stations. They're just really kind of obliterated by these huge frequency swatches. But again, you're buying this radio probably to listen to local AM stations if you're going to do that. And um, it's really not designed to be a DX or distance machine. So I think it was a smart trade-off. And I like the fact that the AM sounds as good as it does. So all in all, I actually really like this radio. In fact, personally, I like this better than the Albergo. Um, it just feels better. It's simple to operate. It sounds good. It has everything going for it. The things that uh, I didn't like about it um, is that it only has a single alarm, but what, do you, what can you expect? And it has that five minute snooze bar um, as opposed to a um, maybe a little bit longer snooze bar. I can live with that. So I actually like this and this may get used, but what about, what about this? Okay, so I, I really don't think that personally that unless you're a radio collector like I am, or unless you just really have to have it, this is a kind of a purchase that you buy because you want it as opposed to a saving savvy purchase. So that's my review of the Tivoli. Oh, I didn't mention probably the most important thing. This particular one has Bluetooth. So if you put it in the um, AUX position and you don't have something plugged in the back, you can easily pair this um, to a Bluetooth device. I did pair this to my uh, MacBook. It paired effortlessly. I was able to play music through it. Um, and what I found is playing music at low to low moderate levels, kind of like you probably would in a bedroom, it sounded really good. Once you started moving the volume up, it didn't sound quite so good to me anyways, but I think it would work fine for those types of applications. You're not going to fill a, a ballroom up with this little speaker under any circumstance, and I think sometimes Bluetooth does compromise um, the, the the audio a little bit. Um, so, so it does work with Bluetooth too. Um, that's why you're paying a little bit more, um, but don't forget, if you have a radio that has an AUX in, um, you can buy a cheap Bluetooth adapter for next to nothing and get the same functionality. 
Um, I've been so intrigued by this whole search for clock radios that I'm going to do probably a couple more. The next one I'm going to do is a very, very inexpensive Sony radio that might surprise you. So if you're in the market for a clock radio, keep watching my channel. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this um, video and please subscribe. And if you get some time, give my podcast a listen. It's called Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike. Have a great day, everyone.